So let's talk a bit about Sony's direction that seems to be kind of set up for the next five or six years. And this is something that was really shown off in full during their latest PlayStation Showcase where we saw their live service initiative really get started. And uh, seems like there are quite a few people concerned about this online and... I can't completely push back on all of that, so we're going to talk about that here today. So if you guys enjoy the video, make sure you like it and subscribe if you're new here to the Spawn Wave Plus channel. First of all, at the PlayStation Showcase, we did see four first-party games from their own studios. We saw Concord, that's from Firewalk. We saw Fair Games, with the dollar sign, that's from Haven. And we saw Marathon, right, that's from Bungie. The big single-player game that we saw was Spider-Man 2, which is exciting. It does look good. The other three, however, were just CGI trailers, and it's hard to gather exactly what they're going to look like necessarily from those trailers. We can kind of say, okay, well, it, we hear Extraction Shooter for something like Marathon, and we've seen what Bungie's done with Destiny, so you can at least try to get an idea from that, but Concord... It's a PvP multiplayer shooter, so uh, sci-fi elements, again, it didn't do the best painting a picture as to what these games will look like, and you would expect that from something more gameplay-focused in some of these spots, but unfortunately, a lot of CG stuff. But the big thing people are now looking at, they're saying, well, hold on, there seems to be a lot of live service stuff going on at Sony now, and in fact, there's one chart that's really being focused on because it was displayed to investors and there's one thing you can count on it's what they're talking about when it comes to money with their investors and this slide for example live services shows that uh fiscal year 19 compared to 23 and then 25 they're gonna go from 12 percent of the ps5 investment by business model up to 60 percent which does seem to eclipse the traditional or what we've seen in the past that was more so focused on single player style games think of uh, ghost of tsushima a new ip from sucker punch clearly took a lot of money to bring that game to life that would have fallen in line with that 88 percent of investment there that you see and uh, now you kind of can see that the the slice of the pie certainly working more towards live service that that's a big climb but if sony is serious about these live service games they will have to invest quite a bit to kind of get things off the ground and i mean you could see that maybe contract a bit after they establish some of these live service games but there are going to be some stumbles in this venture from sony and i think a lot of that has to do with them having studios that aren't necessarily experienced in creating these live service games. Now, if you look at their live service game catalog here, they do have Naughty Dog and Gorilla in there. Uh, Firewalk, still kind of an unknown when it comes to the live service stuff. Obviously, Bungie has proven themselves a couple of times now with Destiny 1 and Destiny 2. Whether you like Destiny 2 or not, it's we all look around and say, well, it holds a very good concurrent player count, and Bungie has held up their more than 900 employee studio company just from Destiny. So they know what they're doing, and they've shown that for years and years and years now. Haven, kind of another unknown when it comes to this whole thing. And I, I have some questions around fair games and if we'll be able to separate itself and make itself feel unique enough in kind of a live service landscape that is just packed full of options. But again, we haven't seen gameplay, so I at least need to give them a shot on, on that. Naughty Dog and Gorilla, though, are the ones that stick out to me. All right, because typically we would see them on the other side, especially recently, the single player game catalog. And after getting that report from Bloomberg that there were indeed issues with factions to the point where Naughty Dog has seemingly moved developers from that project onto what appears to be what they're good at, a single player experience, it does bring up the the question of is this a good idea? for some of these studios within Sony to be focusing resources on these different ventures. Gorilla's another one, but I I would like to see what they come up with with apparently a Horizon multiplayer game. And I would like to see what Factions was looking like as well, but that seems like it's going to be a, a little while there. I was kind of picturing like Division style and structure, which means they would have to have quite quite the support studio going forward to continue adding 
content on. And in fact, that I believe is where a lot of this investment is going to come from, holding these live service games up for the long term. And that was apparently a concern that Bungie had when they worked to evaluate some of these titles. How can you continue to engage the player base to keep them coming back for more? And it seemed like that's something they have to figure out within Naughty Dog. There was no mention that the game was bad necessarily, just that, well, they've made very good narrative-driven single-player experiences, but doesn't necessarily translate over to a game that has to continue evolving with that same quality in mind for years and years. The other part about this that it made me think a bit more after seeing, believe it or not, that Redfall report uh, from Bloomberg was that Arcane Austin was kind of leaned on by ZeniMax in what, 2018, 2017 or something to start building a multiplayer game or one that would bring in more money post initial spend. So you buy the game, what else can you get the player to spend money on? And that's sort of that live service or games as a service structure that comes into play. But Arcane Austin, especially like the ground level developers who make the entire thing go, didn't really want to make it. So they lose a lot of their talent to the point where apparently 70% of developers from uh, Prey are no longer there. It does make you wonder about some of these studios that aren't necessarily experienced with these live service games and if they all really want to come together and make it or if Sony feels the need to kind of push them in that direction because of the ballooning budgets. And that is the big driving force around all of this. Of course it's money, but... Budgets in general, expectations continue to go up across the board with these large AAA games, and it's a concern that has been mentioned a couple of times now. Sean Layden mentioned it years ago, and at that time, he was talking about these budgets being over $200 million for some of these big-time Sony blockbuster titles. However, in the recent CMA documents that we're getting out of the whole Microsoft Activision Blizzard thing... It appears that there are some publishers that are spending significantly more than that. I mean, they've described budgets of $500 million becoming more normalized. And there's even one publisher that's mentioned with marketing and development. They could touch a billion dollars. If I had to guess as to which game that is, probably GTA 6. But still, a billion dollars for a game like that, it's it doesn't really leave room for a lot of risk. And it certainly wouldn't be uh, possible if it wasn't something like GTA 6, right? Following up GTA 5 and the massive amount of sales and the potential you would feel for a follow-up to uh, Grand Auto Online with, again, post-spend that you can rely on. But the biggest concern for me around all of this with Sony is that they kind of lose sight of what's made them popular in just gaming overall. And yeah, that is the, the talented studios making really good games that more or less leverage the single player experience. And I know some people don't necessarily like the more narrative driven stuff, but there's also some really cool things in there when it comes to gameplay and the world building and, and all of this with that storytelling. And if they really try to push over to live service and it doesn't work out like this, it kind of feels like then Naughty Dog would have just wasted a lot of time. And that's another big thing now is how long it takes to develop these games. You really don't have margin of error for playing around with these live service games when it takes six or seven years even to make a single player experience like this. So it's uh, it's certainly the, the tightrope being walked right now by Sony. And I'm hoping they don't fall off midway through. But let me know what you guys think about all this down below Sony's big push towards live service games. How do you think it's all going to work out in the end? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.